Huh. Oh, hey. Uh, sorry, you just caught me looking at Uranus. You know, to me, Uranus is the most fascinating part of the universe. I could spend hours exploring Uranus. In fact, I'm about to make a whole video about what happens in Uranus. <laughs> All right, I'm just getting laughs out of the way so that we can focus properly on the subject matter, calmly and scientifically. Get those giggles out of your system. This is a serious video. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start calling it Uranus rather than Uranus so everyone has a chance to concentrate here. Otherwise, all hope is lost. Be sure to check out our video on Mars too, link coming up at the end. And you're gonna wanna stay through to find out about Uranus though, right? <laughs> I'm Michael this 25 and I am the master of Uranus. Uranus, sorry. And this is 25 fascinating facts about Uranus. 25, where the name comes from. This name is causing all kinds of distractions today, but where did it come from in the first place? Who is responsible for this madness? For the answer to that question, you have to go all the way back to the ancient Romans. They established a tradition of naming planets after Roman gods. Back in those days, they could only make out five planets twinkling in the sky. Being quite a distance further away, naturally Uranus got left out. The official discovery wasn't made until 1781. Sir William Herschel spotted the celestial object. A legendary figure in astronomy, he often engaged in astronomical activity with his sister, Caroline. Uranus is the name of an ancient god, not a Roman one. The majority of planets are named after Roman deities, yet Uranus is distinctly Greek. The name of our own planet, Earth, is also of Greek origin. 24. The original name was pretty different. I was fascinated to hear that Sir William Herschel had a different name in mind for Uranus. He originally wanted to call it Georgian Cytus, or the Georgian Star, in tribute to King George III. Not many people liked the idea, however. It fell to fellow astronomer Johann Bode to christen the object. How irritating is that? Finding a planet and then not being able to name it? That said, Georgian Cytus sounds weird. Hey, you know what guys? I just spotted a whole other planet. And because I like socks, I'm gonna call it thermal cotton. 23, the Shakespearean connection. Uranus has no less than 27 moons. That's interesting in and of itself. But when you look at the names of these moons, you may find them a little familiar. Miranda, Titania, Oberon. Ring the bells? Well, <laughs> you're clearly not as well read as I am. They're actually characters in the plays of William Shakespeare. Yeah, I'm down when it comes to the great bard. And he had a lot to say about the stars and planets too. To quote from Julius Caesar, I am constant as the northern star, of whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. Which definitely means something. 22. It's a long way from the sun. Because this planet is on the further reaches of our solar system, you know it's a long, long way away. Billions of miles, in fact. The exact number varies according to the hour. Of course, Uranus orbits the sun just like we do and is closer to, or further from, the big fiery ball at certain times. An average distance between Uranus and the sun is 1.78 billion miles. 21. It takes a heck of a lot of time to orbit the sun. Can you believe that it takes the better part of a century for Uranus to make one orbit around the sun? A butt numbing 84 years to be precise. That provides 42 hours of daylight and 42 of darkness for the poles at either end. It's actually kind of incredible to think that the journey takes longer than a lot of people actually live down here on Earth. 20. Uranus is lopsided. As it moves around the sun, Uranus tilts at an angle of 98 degrees. This is known as an axial tilt, and it's something we have here on our planet. Our axial tilt is 23.5 degrees and the effect of this lower number of degrees is amazingly powerful. It dictates factors such as how much sunlight different parts of the globe receive. Why do planets tilt? In the case of the Earth, we were apparently struck by a huge object billions of years ago. The same theory has been applied to Uranus, which has the biggest axial tilt in the galaxy. 19. It moves in a clockwise direction. Tick tock goes the clock, and so does the planet Uranus. It moves east to west in what's known as a retrograde direction. The Earth rotates counterclockwise, and we're in good company. Only Venus shares the clockwise pattern of Uranus. 
Another eye-popping fact is that Uranus will roll rather than spin, thanks to being at an angle of nearly 100 degrees. 18. The Equators of Uranus A side effect of the planet being on tilt, <laughs> side effect, see what I did there, is that the Equators of Uranus are kind of in the wrong place, at least in relation to Earth. Uranus's poles are at a whole nother angle due to its extreme axial tilt, so they occupy the positions where the equators would normally be. 17. Rings We typically associate rings with the likes of Saturn, though it may surprise you to learn that Uranus has them also. Planetary rings are made up of space debris, like dust and rocks and ice, which whirl around the circumference. How did Uranus get its rings? The theory goes that a moon of Uranus was destroyed somehow, and the particles were drawn into the orbit of the main planet. Uranus has two outer rings and an astonishing 11 inner rings. Uh, the planet Beyonce has no rings. 16. Uranus is colorful for one stinky reason. In spite of its hilarious name, Uranus is quite a pretty looking planet. But what gives it that blue-green color? Uh, something less pretty. I'm talking about small quantities of methane gas, specifically methane ice created in the icy temperatures high above. The bluey coloring comes from sunlight, which should have red in the mix. However, because light from the sun hits the icy clouds, the red color is absorbed by the methane. Stinky, yet beautiful. 15. Uranus is one icy planet. Now, I said just before that Uranus was a tad on the chilly side, and I wasn't kidding around. The coldest temperatures down there are negative 224 degrees Celsius. Naturally, ice plays a major role in the ingredients that go toward making planet Uranus. As well as having frozen farty smells in the atmosphere, the mantle of the planet, in other words, the mass of material between the crust and the core, is extremely icy. There's a reason they refer to Uranus as an ice giant. 14. The weather is pretty bad. If you think the weather is bad where you are, get a load of this. Uranus has a weather system so extreme it makes a hurricane hotspot look like an amusement park. Aside from the extended period of daylight and nighttime that Uranus experiences at either pole due to its major axial tilt, like I said before, you have the winds. 560 mile per hour winds to be exact. These result in epic storms, which apparently rival the continent of North America in size. 13. Size in relation to Earth. Speaking of size, the diameter of Uranus, as in the width of the planet, is 15,759 miles. How does that work out in relation to Earth? Studies of the distant world revealed it to be four times wider than our own. NASA states that it would be like comparing a nickel to a softball. Humbling news, but hey, size isn't everything, right? 12. How Uranus formed There's a lot we still don't know about our universe and its laws. Many of the basics we know of when it comes to space are sheer guesswork. The protoplanet hypothesis is the cosmic yardstick used by boffins to do their mental heavy lifting. In this theory, material floating around in the cosmos is pulled together in a ball shape by powerful gravitational forces. Uranus is naturally believed to have formed through this process. The pull of gravity rolls the new planet into a sphere the same way a baker slaps around a big piece of dough to make a bun. It's like a Delicious space burger with magma instead of relish and a bunch of forests and people instead of lettuce and a beef patty. I'm sorry, I skipped breakfast today. 11. Jovian Energy Our planet Earth, along with many others in our solar system, is made up of a lot of rocks with a bunch of atmospheric layers surrounding it. Not all worlds are the same, however. Uranus shares a distinction with Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune in that it's kind of all atmosphere with a small core section. These planets are known as Jovian planets. Jovian comes from Jove, another name for Jupiter. It's been noted that these Jovians are typically hot due to having a furnace-like core that burnt up a lot of material. This isn't the case for Uranus though. For some reason, it's the coldest of the Jovian planets by far. Did it spring a leak and let out all the hot stuff? Does it have a raging core but it's sealed away somehow? We just don't know. 10. 63 Earths We know Uranus is equal in size to four planet Earths, but how much does it weigh? The answer to that question is a lot. In fact, you measure Uranus in septillions. I don't even think I ever heard the word septillion until this video. It means a number equal to one with 24 zeros. 
Experts have calculated the weight of Uranus as 86 septillion, the equivalent of 1 trillion 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 kilograms. When you look at the volume, i.e. the space it takes up, we're talking 6.83 times 1,013 cubic kilometers. While it would take a while to explain exactly what that means, there is one mind-boggling fact that I can drop on you right away. You could fit no less than 63 Earths inside Uranus. Makes my eyes water just thinking about it. 9. Solar Deficiency Uranus may have the Earth licked in all kinds of ways. It seems to have a lot more of everything. Though one way in which Earth beats Uranus is the amount of sunlight it receives. If you're expecting a sunny day on Uranus, forget about it. For starters, it only gets a quarter of the light we have here. Secondly, the time it takes for sunlight to reach Uranus is close to three hours. For Earth, we're talking minutes. 8. The First Telescopic Planet We take stargazing for granted, thanks to the wide range of equipment we have to study the heavens up close, often from the comfort of our own homes. Yet there was a time when seeing a planet through a telescope was a whole new thing. Sir William Herschel, who put Uranus on the space map, was indeed sitting in his back garden when observing what came to be known as Uranus. It was the first planet to be spotted using the handy device, and made him the historical equivalent of a household name. You see, no one had found a planet for centuries. 7. It was mistaken for a comet While Herschel made an extraordinary find, he didn't immediately recognize it as such. I'm understating when I use the word immediately, by the way. It took not just a few weeks or a few months, but a few years for the identity of Uranus to be finally revealed. Initially, he thought it was a comet because it was moving in what looked like quite a speedy fashion, at least in planetary terms. But nope, it was a great big planet. 6. They made a crazy science fiction movie about it. In 1962, a movie was released called Journey to the Seventh Planet. Taking its title from Uranus and its position in the solar system, the plot focused on a group of astronauts who land on Venus. There, they face alien threats, terrible monsters, and of course, beautiful alien women. It was a low-budget effort and a co-production between the US and Denmark. A Danish-American sci-fi flick. Oh, there's some you don't see every day. Now, it won't be a surprise for you to learn that this film isn't scientifically accurate. One of the main things the producer got wrong will be described in our next entry. 5. You can't set foot on it If you did try and land on Uranus, you'd fall straight through the floor, because there is no floor. The surface is believed to be made up of fluid, to be more specific, water and ammonia. Ouch. The good news is that you wouldn't need to land on Uranus anyhow. You'd be smashed to pieces in the extreme atmosphere first, some believe that would have improved the movie Journey to the Seventh Planet. No end. 4. A Day on Uranus Let's say that you were to enjoy a day on Uranus somehow. What would you expect? Well, it would be seven hours shorter for one thing. This is because the planet rotates faster, resulting in a 17-hour day. We move at 0.46 kilometers per second, whereas Uranus shifts its cosmic butt at a rate of 2.59 kilometers per second. 3. Cliff Notes You might not think that there's much to see on Uranus, apart from a swirling mass of foul liquid and terrible weather conditions. However, this strange planet has a habit of surprising you. It's surrounded by moons, which contain some pretty stunning features. For example, the moon Miranda, named after a character written by Shakespeare, remember, is home to the Verona Rupes Cliff. This name also has a Shakespearean connection, with Verona forming the backdrop of his play Romeo and Juliet. Meanwhile, rupes means cliff in the Latin tongue. Verona rupes measures approximately 12.4 miles high, making it the tallest in our planetary system. Don't worry too much if you fall off the top incidentally. The amount of gravity up there would create a rather slow descent. It takes the average person 12 minutes to plunge to the ground below. That's a hypothetical, but it's fun. 2. Weird Moon Continuing on from that lunar death plunge, what would you see on the way down, aside from an epic cliff face rushing past your head? Over the course of decades, humans have managed to get closer and closer views of the planet Uranus and its moons. The disruption caused to the surface of Miranda, represented by craters and loose deposits, has created a fractured surface that some have compared to a work of art. 1. It doesn't support life If you have images of alien life forms on Uranus, then think again, space cadet. 
sadly, it doesn't look like the planet could support any life whatsoever. NASA reports that things are so extreme down there that organisms would have too tough a time getting established. Of course, there may be a kind of life down there that we don't know about and can't comprehend. Little squiggly things are capable of living in ice because it's water. Ultimately, however, we can't say for certain. Plus, what would you call aliens who live on Uranus? Uranians? That sounds a little funky to me. So, those were our 25 fascinating facts about Uranus. What do you think? Is there a mind-blowing fact about Uranus that we missed? Let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content, and check out our social medias, including my personal ones, links in that description. And if you want more interplanetary goodness, then be sure to check out this video here, 25 surprising facts about the red planet, uh, namely Mars. Click on the link here, and I'll see you soon for another list. Let's blast off again, like Team Rocket. It's not about anime, it's about space.